Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is the last of like kind of like these snobby cinema magazines they have at Barnes and Nobles. I got this a couple months ago. Uh, it was about it was pretty for the what it was. You had, uh, it was pretty cheap for it. I figured this would just be either boring or it'd just be like more of the same. Uh, but there were some things in here I actually got out of it that were that were cool. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna come up here, sort of see where we're at here, right? A Netflix for the left. Okay, which is to say, you know, uh, this stuff will go. Nowhere. The way you change the culture is through the actual Netflix, through corporate backing. Okay? But like I said, these are all uh, these are all thoroughly uh, upper middle class bourgeois uh, fashion uh, uh, things being shown here. Okay? Now most of it was boring. It, it, it sort of didn't get interesting to me. Right. All right. Uh, despite doing this third world things, you're always going to be a bougie tourist. Um, in this film, some German woman, a 16 millimeter film, shot something on a boat with a bunch of French Foreign Legion guys, and some kind of statement on colonialism or something. Oh, Francois, let's, let's smoke cigarettes and talk about uh, you know, Sartre or something. Right? It starts to get interesting though, and I have to thank this writer, whoever he is. He actually turned me on to a filmmaker I was not familiar with. Okay? Uh, although the attempt of this was to sort of mock the guy and uh, badmouth his new film, okay? But a lot of things come together in this that uh, that sort of tie in the threads I keep coming on, okay? Things that you and I can see, so but are not so easy to uh, uh, to to see by the rush, okay? Eventually, the, this guy has a new film. It's kind of like an animated film about Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, and Churchill, okay? Uh, what? No FDR right? in limbo. Okay, but it's like an animated weird film. Okay, uh, so I never heard of this guy, but right off the bat, this guy is like uh, he, he's ripping on his movies. Right? Easily one of his most grotesque and unwatchable films. One of his. So, guys are taking shots at him here. Okay, seems that uh, Sakharov, the Khan, canceled a film showing of this. Okay, uh, and the director suspects that uh, a lot of it is because he is a Russian. Big R, right? Why don't you put a little R there, right? Uh, despite Sarkov's hurt feelings, oof, you're gonna see a lot of the passive aggressive stuff in the subtext of this. Right? Uh, there had been an open discussion about whether festivals should accept Russian films at all, following the country's brutal invasion of Ukraine in February. Right? While Putin's deadly machismo and tyrannical rule are hardly in question, right? Uh, the West has been at loss for how to respond to the invasion. Despite supplying weapons to the Ukrainian military, NATO does not want to go toe to toe with Russia. Hamstrung liberal elites have satisfied themselves at the moment with purely symbolic gestures, flying the blue and yellow, right? uh, and a few economic ones. Dos Vidania Starbucks, oh. <laughs> that won't amount to much in the long run. Right? So, what do you want to do, bro? You want to yeah, judge. judge Go join a friggin' uh, go fight, buddy. That seems to be the implication of what you're saying. Okay. Um, remember that? Remember that? Remember when that was a leftist thing to throw at uh, conservatives? Okay. All right. So essentially, uh, fe most festivals have established a semi-official, uh, way over semi-official, very corrupt. Uh, which is yeah, which is to say, semi-official is very corrupt. No fly zone for Russian films. And the ones I haven't have been criticized by representatives of the Ukrainian film industry. Now, I'm not even getting into the obvious of, like, I thought you're not supposed to punish uh, individuals for the actions of their government. Okay, but it goes beyond that here. Okay, he goes, now nah, it's funny. There's no getting around the fact that Fairy Tale is a weird ass film, different from anything this man has made to date and very out of step with the contemporary scene. Well, geez, man, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be friggin' a cinematic rebel, you're supposed to be pushing the boundaries. Interesting uh, that that the man's crime is to make something that's out of step. Right? I don't know if this is awareness. I don't know if this is a revelation of the method. I don't know what the hell this is anymore. Actually, I, I do know what it is. But you know, so and then we got the twentieth um, century's biggest pieces of shit: okay? Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, and Churchill. Oh, like I said, like I said no FDR. Come on, the FDR should probably be there. anyway. Sakharov is directed to typically perceived as having a distinctive style, a brand and leave it. That is thought of being as ponderous, grim. Oh, I like this. And this guy, like I said, this article made me check out Sakharov's 
uh, movies uh, on the ones that are on YouTube. Uh, this hit piece has now made me a fan. So I guess uh, I guess that didn't work. Uh, um. And the guy even brings out what I like about him. Right? He's, Sokolov has expressed interest in combining classical aesthetics with the flatness of modernism. She the image is fundamentally plastic, but still trying to achieve the sublime. Yeah, like the the I, these examples I've seen, some of his films, he like shoots them through glass, or he, he does weird effects on them to make them seem like very. Uh, it makes them look murky in different ways, but I think it adds to the atmosphere. I keep saying atmosphere is what we're looking for, right? Uh, so I'm already on. I'm already on a board with this dude who, so yeah, anti-modern, right? How anti-modern these works are. Of course, Sakharov, just like Tartovsky, the weight of Russian history of the 20th century, of the centuries before, weigh heavily on all of Russian cinema. Okay, I kind of like. I guess what I kind of like about it. Right? So he makes a uh, clutch cargo uh, rip on him with the cartoons, right? But um, I like this here. It should be noted that the placement of Churchill along with these three verified dictators has raised a few eyebrows. Ha 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 We certainly know of his colonialist exploits, right? None of the stuff Churchill did is going to save him in the earth, right? And the problem of Africa, right? So, uh, it's weird too. He goes here, I quibble with Mussolini's legacy, because right? he mentioned that he only selected the four guys that Russian newspaper cited as the most influential architects of modern geopolitics. Uh, Mussolini's legacy seems negligible compared to Anaturk's. Well, Ataturk's only in Turkey. Mussolini was a brilliant writer, a brilliant theorist. In many ways, I believe his theories of state capitalism, uh, like what you see in China and Russia, are, are basically the future. Okay, maybe the past is oligarchs and plutocracy that you have, like in this place. Yeah. One can only hope. But anyway, and right, and this guy, right, Sakharov was no radical, whatever. Uh, he used to be friendly with Putin, but. I like to say he goes. He's no one. He's under no obligation to direct aim at to take direct aim at Putin, which almost sounds like you're saying he should, but uh, which would be suicide, right? Uh, he's no radical, right? So he, he has had issues with Putin himself, right? So uh, his jabs from the center right were never likely to impress anyone. <laughs> uh, so anyway, thanks you, buddy. I'm gonna want to check this movie out. So I don't know how, but I will, right? And right here, but it strongly suggests time is either stopped or folded in on itself in a permanent ideological miasma, a terrence, multiplying and divide, appearing and fading, and only the faces change. Well, that's exactly what's happening. You don't even realize what you said, my friend. Okay? I keep bringing up the idea, you know, at BTD, I keep bringing up the idea of the, of the zombie nation, okay, of the civilization that will not die, okay, but will continue on as a living, dead civilization, which is the greatest horror of all. Okay, a limbo, a purgatorio. So, thank you, my friend again. I'm gonna check this guy's movies out, and I've liked what I've been seeing on YouTube already. So, uh, just going here real quick. This this probably has no interest to you, but as someone who has still some fondness for anarchism from his past, it's an interesting film about the Swiss watchmakers, the Jura Federation. So, uh, Bakunin. Uh, was involved with the, uh, particularly after Bakunin got thrown out by the Marxists from the first international, okay, and then Kropotkin, this film is about Kropotkin uh, visiting them and becoming an anarchist, full anarchist after his association with them. I always had a soft spot in my heart for uh, Kropotkin, so, and Bakunin was kind of crazy, but uh, Kropotkin was, was a very decent human being. I mean, listen, this is stuff I remember from the past. Uh, he was sort of a romantic fool too. I like the Oscar Wilde dubbed him the White Christ. So, this has no interest to the rest of you. This has a little interest to me, you know. But uh, yeah, it's interesting right here, and also interesting here that I didn't know. Arkham Reporter uh, taught me absinthe is from Switzerland, so they were drinking. They would be drinking absinthe at the pub. Very very cool. My goth ass has my goth my my former goth ass has never had absinthe. Can you believe that? Gotta turn my card it. Uh, so I'm just trying to think here what's what's interesting. Uh, I think I might have to make a second video. There's something here on these two guys who kind of make like these films, like like some horror comedy or something. But it just going through it, it just didn't seem very interesting to me. But whatever, that's just me. So 
Um, they're doing an Irma Web HBO series. Okay. Uh, obviously, the original Irma, you know, the Web from Le Vampire, right? The 1915 serial. Uh, it wasn't really much interesting here. I just, so some interesting things, I guess, you know, just what was being said, right? We're talking about the Neanderthal period, right? The 80s, the late 70s and early 80s. Well, call me a Neanderthal. Take me back, please. So, and I like, it makes a good thing. This, this guy actually made some good uh, comments here. The black and white images bring that surreal quality. It's reality, but it's not reality. It's something else. Exactly. God, love it when people bring up, you know, the thing. I thought this was interesting, a little interplay here too. Uh, rock and roll used to be much raw, but it's not officially part of the industry. As much as I'm a fan of indie rock, uh, I can't help but no, I can't help but notice that's everywhere. You go to a shoe store and they're playing indie rock. You're playing lands, you hear indie rock. Okay, uh, well maybe you need to listen to black metal instead. Okay. Right, uh, yeah, Thurston Moore writing some of the scores. Sonic Youth. I'm so fond of Thurston Moore. Yeah, Th Sonic Youth. Thurston Moore likes black metal, by the way. You know that. So, but uh, he makes a good point there. You know how Indian rebellious is it when it's you know. Uh, Rock and roll, right. Now, this is interesting. This is, once again, all these guys and gals, right? They're being faced with this, uh, this sort of uh, uh, make this, make the wrong statement, comrade, and you're going to have some problems, okay? There's money involved, right? Don't even try to pretend that we're all artists. Uh, movies, like rock and roll music, were once areas where morality was not a factor. Now morals are involved. I'm not sure what to think of it. I do agree with a lot of it, but I also think it ends up affecting the balance of cinema. So that's his way of addressing, you know, the the, the modern, uh, you know, the, the woke. I hate using that term at this point as well, but that was just an interesting thing. I have no interest in that thing, the show, but you know, some interesting comments. And um, uh, this guy, Peter Brook, right? well, I guess, you know, like Mel Brooks, right? Uh, but this guy, this is the guy that did Lord of the Flies, right? And this is the guy that did Marat Saad. Uh, I'll probably end the video with this and go to another one. Uh, BTD, do you remember uh, PBS, right? Channel 13. I remember the Halloween, I think around Halloween, it was like uh, 99 or 98. They had a real, they showed three horror films. They showed an uncut Spirits of the Dead, right? Remember the Poe anthology with uh, Vadim and uh, uh, who's the other one? Uh, Fellini, of course, the best one, Fellini with the Terrence Stamp, Toby Dammit. Uh, and they had also they had a really good documentary on there, and there was another film I forgot what it was, um, and they had Marat Saad, and I remember watching it, and of course I read the play a while ago. I need to read it again. A lot of interesting stuff in that. So he did that. I, I didn't really think of the director, and I like how it was done very cheaply. Essentially, what is it? Uh, he, he makes it. I like how th he talks here uh, with three sides, four cameras working nonstop. We covered the production like a boxing match. Right, like, you know, just film a boxing match. You need at least three cameras, right? It's interesting how they filmed it. It's essentially a stage play. Right? Uh, I definitely need to watch this again. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, The Lord of the Flies. Yeah, that was interesting. So those are those are two great films, I'm just saying, regardless of uh, the, the Mr. Brooks' politics. Listen, everything is political, okay? So... Now this thing here, this was some magazine or something. I'll end it with this. This magazine and uh, nothing really interesting in it. Just like, you know, the bougie Marxist kind of stuff that doesn't go anywhere, right? Because you're all rich kids. Um, right. It's demographics in terms of both authors and subjects. It's lamentably white and men. <laughs> uh, you know, there's Marxist arg arguments against this. This kind of stuff. Uh, look up Amy Therese. Right? And I like the the, the Frampton uh, ideas of meta history, okay, meta cinema. What is that? The meta is true. Meta everything. It's always more. It's always beyond what is in front of you. Right? But whatever, this magazine didn't seem too interesting. You know, I thought this was a funny thing here. Right? We now find ourselves in a situation where the line between art and non-art is vanishingly thin. Walter Benjamin, we remember, had a name for this. <laughs> I got uh, right. meta history. We're in the real issue regarding the very idea of meta history. Well, they're approaching things we're trying to find. Of course, the, the problem with the the Marxist uh, or or left or whatever these guys are liberals, they're trying to find an exit from it. How can we escape this? Okay, uh, uh, you are not. Okay, uh, I like here too. We're all a little factor of metadata. Okay, 
okay not a good night so there's interesting stuff but uh you know i'll do one more vid to cover this so i think i might be boring you lot